Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're all doing great. Today I'll make a tutorial how and why you should use blueprint interfaces. I've had some of you commented that my tutorials are too long and I want to try something new. I'm going to experiment with shorter tutorials, more focused on specific concept, something you can watch quickly and immediately apply. These videos will be just centered around a key concept or some tip and I'm planning to release them more frequently. Uh, don't worry, I'll continue to make the more detailed longer tutorials if you like them, but please in the comments let me know which ones do you prefer or some mix of both so I know how to continue to provide you with the content you want to see. So let's start with the today tutorial about the blueprint interfaces. I'm working on the AI system for uh, pets in my game and I wanted to show you why you should implement blueprint interfaces instead of casting to different type of blueprints in your script. Let's now see the difference in this two animation blueprint. The first one is using a blueprint interface and the second one is using a cast to the blueprint of my dock. So in the beginning I'm saving the pawn owner in this animal variable as a character and then on the update animation I'm casting to the NPC dock class and I'm using the get speed and get states functions inside this NPC dock blueprint and while this works for this specific dock class if you use this same animation blueprint on another class for example this blueprint NPC undead dock. If I play the game, you will see that when you call the lay function, it's working on the blueprint of the dock, but not on the undead dock. He's staying in the stand position, no matter what command is being executed. This fails because of this cast node. It's casting to a specific class and if you're not using this class it will not work. If you go here and check if this cast fails, let's try to cast to the undead dock. And this will succeed for the other dock. So let's say that uh, we will get the speed now for the other dog. We don't need this for the commands, but we'll need this one. So let's get states. And after we get the states, let's save them. Let's go with this one. We will not need the others. Let's remove these pins for now and let's connect here the states just to show you now how it will work and also why it will be a problem to set it up like this. Now if I play the game, let me go back here. Now you can see that they're both working. Let's go back into the animation blueprint. And what about if you add another type of animal? For example, a cat or a horse or a bear. Anything else should check the cast and redo all of your logic. You can enter this logic into some function to make it easier to do. But for every type of animal, you will need to recreate this graph, essentially. This is a big problem for scalability of your game. But the even bigger problem is that if you cast like 
this to a specific blueprint class, the class that you're casting into, so this animation blueprint, if I right click and choose the size map or click Alt Shift and M, this will show you that this animation blueprint is 136 megabytes. So when you load your game, when you have any animal in your game, it will for example, you have just the first dock in your game, you're not using in your current level the second dock, it will load the whole 136 megabytes that are containing both the regular dock and the undead dock, because you are doing a reference to both of them inside this animation blueprint. So this is a big problem. If you have hundreds of animals and you are doing this casting to them, you will load everything no matter if you're using it or not so what if you're using blueprint interfaces let's check the size map of the other blueprint so you can see this is only nine megabytes and you see it's not loading any of the contents of either the mpc doc class or the undead doc class it's only loading the things that are used inside this animation blueprint so the animations and the logic that shows you how to pick what animation to play. This is, as you can see, much better. You are just loading 9 megabytes instead of 150 or thousands, maybe if you have other animals with casting inside this. So let's see how we can do this with the Blueprint interface. I created this uh, simple blueprint interface right here let me open it so what is a blueprint interface it's just a list of the functions that you will need to implement into every object that uses this blueprint interface so for now you saw me use this get speed and get states functions i also have these commands so i can demonstrate that the animation blueprint is working so how you can create this blueprint interface if you right click anywhere into your content browser you can go to the blueprint menu and choose a blueprint interface call it bpi for blueprint interface let's call it animal test and here you need to create all the functions that you will use for example let's create a sit function then click on the add function button uh, stand, attack, and so on. When you need a function that will have an output, you can create, let's say, this get speed function. And here at the end of this panel, you have this output section. Let's click here and define I entered animal speed. After you create the list of all the functions that you will implement with this interface, let me close this now. I'll delete this and I'll use the one that I created earlier. You can go into your blueprint, for example, here into my blueprint MPC doc. Click here on the class settings. Here into this implemented interfaces, you have this add button and you can find your blueprint interface. I already have it added right here. Let's remove it. Now I don't have any interface used into this class. If I click on the class, uh, on the class settings and I add a BPI animal. So now I added this blueprint interface and here into the left section you have this new tab interfaces and here is the list of all of the functions that I defined into my blueprint interface and you need to, to set up the behavior of each function. For example, let's open the get speed version, we'll get the velocity well, 
get the vector length and into this specific animal my dog and for the animation blueprint that I'm creating now I need the value to be between 0 and 100 and because this dog has a max speed of 600 I'll divide this by 6 so this function for the interface can be different for every animal that you create with this interface for example if you have a, a snail that's moving like with a speed of 5 instead of 600 you will multiply in order to get from 1 to 100 if that's the value you need for the animation blueprint so the important thing is that you have a different implementation for each class that uses this blueprint interface so let's continue with the other functions here let's compile to save this and go to the get speed get states function so this get states needs to return you the states for your blueprint let's connect this states here and this is moving let's use this get speed and check if it's greater than some value for example let's say 5 let's compile and save this and for every of these other functions let's click all of them and do an implementation for everything into this interface they will call the reset states and then each of them the first one is aggressive so it will set the aggressive value to true the second one should say that the animal is laying the next one is uh, sitting and this stand is just resetting all these values so this reset states this sets all of these values to false and every other command just sets the relative state to true so this is the implementation of all of the functions in our blueprint interface and i have implementations for all the functions in the undead doc as well they can be the same or they can be different for example this aggressive currently doesn't have an implementation as you can see so let's say that we'll just reset the state so for our undead dog the aggressive will be the same as just standing and doing nothing oh sorry i already have an implementation so let's delete it and use this one so right now my regular dog has all the commands do what they're called but my undead dog have this aggressive command do just standing so you'll see that you can have different implementations for each of them and into my blueprint for the the animation blueprint that's using the interface and not the casting you can see now i can control both of my blueprints with just this variable type so now if i drag here my animal variable which is just cast to a character type it's not either the the dog blueprint or the undead dog blueprint i can just call a function that's implemented in the interface so let's say get speed and you can see here message in the parentheses 
this means that it will send a message that it wants to call this function. And if this function is available with an interface inside this object, it will call it. If not, it will not do anything and it will not fail and it will not do an error. So it will not have any problem calling this function on uh, objects that don't have it. So let's call the get states as well. And both of the objects have implementations for these functions. So this code just we are doing it in one place and it will work for both our doc and our undead doc. Unlike before, our other animation blueprints needed everything to be doubled and tripled for if we had another animal type and so on. So let's go now into the undead doc and change the animation blueprint to be the same as the other one. This one that's not casting to anything. So now they're both using this first animation blueprint, which is not casting, but using a blueprint interface. I will delete the second one. So we are sure we are not using it. Now, if we play the game, we are using for both ones the animation blueprint with the interface and they're both executing the commands. You can see now the aggressive command is not doing anything on the undead doc. This is because we implemented a different version of the command for it. So you can see how you can reuse the same code and you can reduce the RAM blueprint that's used in your memory for everything using this blueprint interface pattern. So hopefully this helps you understand why it's so important to use it and not rely on casts. And if you have any questions, write in the comments and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.